Right, so today we are talking about one of the safest and most effective abdominal focused exercises ever, the sit-up. And I know safe and effective usually isn't the phrase used to describe the sit-up. If anything, most people will tell you that it's not very effective and even dangerous to do. And this is largely a myth, partially because back in the 90s and early 2000s, there were a lot of companies selling infomercial ab gadgets and stuff like that. And they were saying that in order to get the best results, you you can't do sit-ups, you have to do whatever they're selling for three easy payments of $19.95. The other reason why people think the sit-up is bad is because it's horribly misunderstood in application and greenhorn personal trainers like myself at the time used to tell everybody it's terrible, planks are way better and stuff and nothing's bad about planks but the sit-up is a fantastic exercise if you follow these tips. So tip number one, floor. We are on the floor. We're not trying to arch our back over balls or BOSU balls or use any fancy sort of supports and stuff. We want to have a flat surface, preferably something firm and hard. So it's not like a super thick pad. You can use something like a yoga mat or something, but the flatter and harder, the better. And the reason for that is because when we have a flat, hard surface, that helps us optimize our body position and alignment for the optimal sit up. So here's how this works. So we're going to sit on down, or lay on down rather, and we initiate the sit up, not from the shoulders like a crunch, but in the pelvis with a posterior tilt. And when we do that posterior tilt, several things are happening. One, you kind of see my uh, knees pick up a little bit, so that pushes my heels down into the floor, so I have a little bit of hamstring engagement, which is key. Also, I'm driving my lower back into the ground. My pelvis is rolling. So this initially sets you up to have the best rolling up and forward position. If you don't have that posterior tilt, that's where things go awry. You have quad dominant, so your legs start picking up, and you also have a lumbar extension, which makes it almost impossible to pick up, and you have stress in that lower back. So initially, just like so. From there, we also want to make sure we are not anchoring our feet down because when we sit up, our feet need the freedom to move along the floor. So when we sit up, we reach forward, flexing the spine, and lift up, kind of like I'm trying to touch my toes. So you see how I just kind of rolled myself up? As I did this, all the tension was in my full abdominals. It's not just in the top abs or like one side or the other. It's in the full abdominals, top to bottom no stress whatsoever in the lower back. And then you re reverse the process and you, my feet slide back. Now you can maintain that posterior tilt, but I recommend just kind of releasing it a little bit and then engaging it again for the rep. This just gets you in the habit and good practice of learning how to proactively use that posterior tilt for your core training and that carries over to better planks and other things as well. Note that again, my feet are sliding. So as I sit up, my feet slide forward. And then as I come down, they come backwards. That allows all of that stress and pressure that people often feel in their lower back to shoot down their legs in a very safe manner. The other mistake that often happens with sit-ups and a lot of core exercises actually is people do way too much volume. They're like, I do 300 sit-ups every day. And my response is, why are you doing them in such an easy way? Like you wouldn't go into the gym and say, I can do 300 bench presses, but I just use the empty bar, right? So we want to add intensity. We do that with our hands. So the further out our hands are, the easier the exercise is. Then when we bring our hands up, we add essentially weight to our upper body and that makes it more difficult. You can, of course, weight the sit-up by holding on to something, but it's not going to take much. Even just five or ten pounds is going to be sufficient to make this a much more intense exercise. If you want to try it out with a sample exercise, I left it down below for you. Also, if you have any thoughts or questions down in the comment section are welcome as well. Thank you very much for watching. More videos here. Be fit, live free.